So here we are at year three set up. This is the second year with polystyrene hives. Um, the first year we started out with eights, wooden eight frames, and they're back there. Uh, we moved on from that. They didn't do too well. I don't know if it's the eight frame boxes or it's just like our inexperience in the first year. They, we didn't take any honey in the first year because um, we were like, oh yeah, we want them to survive. We'll just give them everything. They didn't make it through the winter. It's probably a Varroa problem. In fact, 100% sure it was a Varroa problem. Second year, we bought a polystyrene 10 frame just to, you know, give it a try. So we ran them next to each other, the 8 frame and the polystyrene. The polystyrene, um, we left quite a bit of honey in, in uh, we left one full deep for the winter. Uh, we actually converted the 8 frame to a polystyrene um, late in the year because we noticed that the polystyrene box was just, the bees were doing so much better, they were killing it. Um, like twice as much honey coming in. Uh, the, the brood was amazing. Uh, I think they just, they're able to regulate the temperature in there better. And uh, it's less humid because there's a big opening in the bottom and they're just, I don't know, they're just better. Uh, and also the internal, um, here I'll show you. So this is a paradise bee box. Um, I'm going to be doing this year a few uh, modifications, but not to the box, just to like equipment. So this, this is the, uh, I just got a plastic excluder uh, because that's what fits. But I'm going to be uh, buying wooden, wooden framed queen excluders with metal, metal excluder. And then I'm going to be um, altering the wood to put it in there. So. There's the top. I guess it's reversible, but I've never reversed it. I guess if you live in like some desert or something where it's like 100 degrees or in Fahrenheit or like 40 degrees Celsius, we don't ever had to worry about that. This is a feeder. What's beautiful about this feeder, it's internal. I never have to worry about robbing. You just fill it up with uh, your whatever you're going to fill it up with. And then this is side so I'm, I've got ready for some nukes to come in and um, right now I just have them closed up because the nukes are coming in soon but this this thing uh, goes in the bottom just when you're treating it's uh, normally this is open so they have an open bottom and you can put a, a, a strip down here on the bottom just to measure uh, mite drop um, and when you actually do a treatment you put this in just just while your treatment is on um, and then take it out afterwards after you, after you've given them time I just got it like that to minimize the amount of bugs that are gonna go in and uh, I want this space be reserved for my bees. So a word about these. Um, so I have these on my father-in-law's girlfriend's property. Yeah, this is this is a field of basically flowers and then a woods and then there are no there are farms off that way, but I think there's enough here. There's a commercial beekeeper off in that direction, which concerns me, probably where my Varroa is coming from. Well, my Varroa is everywhere, but. Here's the big word to the wise. You gotta be careful with these. Um, a little bit of care. See, I've, it's not a big deal there. But, so I left it with my father-in-law and he stored this in his shed. I don't know, I had it out on his, on his um, back porch 
but he put it in his shed underneath where he stores, I think, his weed eater. And gas dripped out onto the bee box. And this is soft. I'm just going to let it dry, see if it'll dry. But don't put these. I'm not going to get too mad at my father in law. He was doing me a, a solid and, and just. Um, and storing them for he's 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 he doesn't know what he's doing but he's he's a good guy don't let solvents drip on polystyrene because polystyrene will melt and gas and oil those are solvents like heavy duty solvents anyway there you go other than that really good they've actually done me well i'm just got here waiting um i've got frames from last year spun out the honey in them i have no place to put them so i'm just doing this to i've uh i had them all stacked up and i had uh um, you call it now um bulamit mothballs the mothballs that don't infiltrate the actual uh, uh, wax so they're safe now I'm airing them out because it's gonna be fast and furious with putting on the uh, the next uh, next level and we'll use ours and I just don't have any place to put them and the bees are good at cleaning them up anyway and anything that's left in there the local bugs will eat that uh, and I'm not too worried about wax moth in there because of the sunlight. Um, this here, you see how this is another polystyrene box? You really shouldn't store wax um, or frames inside a polystyrene box for too long because wax moths, if they do get in there, they'll eat the polystyrene apparently. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'll let you know how it's going um throughout the year uh, i'll have little updates and uh hopefully i mean we made enough money from our honey that we didn't lose any money this year we bought nukes with the profits from our honey from two beehives and really it was one big beehive one beehive where all the honey came from and that was our polystyrene so this year if it, if we fail if our if our uh bees die we'll have taken enough honey and we took enough honey and kept the uh the bottom box full for the for the winter of honey it was it was completely full of honey um they just died they they died of varroa and we know that because i had monitors in there and i knew exactly when they collapsed and we went out it was like Beginning of November, end of November, they died. And we were like, oh, you know, like we went out, we took the bees off and you could actually see them being covered in Varroa. The dead bees were covered in, those that were left were covered in Varroa and they were full of honey and there was no like um, poop all in it or they, you know, they whatever that incontinence that they get, there's none of that. So none of those diseases, and there was no like uh, it was it was classic varroa. So this year we'll be a little bit more serious about our varroa um, treatment schedule. Huh. What can you do? This is why I recommend if you're going to do this, you start off with three. You know, or start off with two and you you screw it up for a couple of years. And when you, you know, like, but you're not like, you're not hurting yourself, you know. You you take the honey, you get, you get a spinner, you sell that honey to your friends and the profits that you make off of that honey, you buy more nukes. And sooner or later, you'll get to the point where you're not buying nukes. And when you're not buying nukes, when you're splitting your hives, then you're making enough money to put in more hardware into your enterprise and then you can pull it up but those first couple of years like this isn't easy 
you know, bees aren't easy. You're, you, this is a, like any livestock, there's a learning curve. But the great thing about bees, as opposed to like pigs or cattle or anything like that, you know, if you're the type of cattle farmer that uh, your herd all dies every year, well, that's a serious problem. But if you're the type of beekeeper that, you know, you're trying your best, but, you know, you're, you're trying to do everything right, maybe you're making little mistakes, you're not, you're not polluting uh, the people around you, uh, you're isolated and whatnot, then uh, you can make the mistakes, your beehives die, and then you just restart. And sooner or later, you're gonna find that it's gonna be all right, you're gonna learn. Um, and it's a good entry into agriculture. Anyway, um, that's it. I'll let you know how it goes uh, going forward.